what is the North and South node? The North node is where we're going and the South node is where we came from. When we're dealing with the nodal shift as far as transits are concerned, it represents a growth period for humanity and the collective that we can only truly focus on in our personal lives. So North node is where we're going. We've been going towards sovereignty and liberation where others might have found themselves really stuck in the South node energies of the scorpionic energy and not able to emerge and complete that process. So now there's an opportunity as we move into the North node, going into Aries, South node and Libra, which is happening July 17th. So in astrology, the lunar nodes are the invisible celestial points where the moon's orbits uh, orbit in intersects with the ecliptic, the earth's orbit around the sun. The global lunar nodes are transiting the Taurus Scorpio, Scorpio access until July 17th, 2023. So in our process of rebirthing ourselves, finding a new sense of self-worth on our own terms, letting the old paradigm programs that might still exist in us or where others are holding on to it that want us to join them or resist the truth that we have to offer. Um, now we're moving into the North Node Aries, South Node Libra. South Node Libra is very much about being uh, maybe a people pleaser, right? And being somebody easy to walk all over. And that's the lower octave of Libra. So many people avoid the awakening process because they're afraid of whatever people think. So because this is a South node, that's what we're going to be reflecting upon as a collective in this growth period. Where is this still getting the best of you, right? So when the North node is in Aries, and when this transits begin, you'll find that you move towards independence, a stronger sense of self, and where the fire in you and the pioneering spirit will call you to take more charge and move away from any kind of dependence and any kind of attachment to social expe uh, expectations of what you should do. This means that you'll start to care more about what makes your soul sing. And instead of what society tells you how to be and what to think. And with the Saturn Pisces going into retrograde, we're reevaluating belief systems and able to expand more into what is possible and what we can manifest and create. So there's sort of an identity crisis going on. And so the death of like what we thought was who we are is very much what we're facing. The person that we want to be for other people is a part of this sort of letting go as well. So that when we step into the Aries energy, the I am creator self is speaking for your truth and who you are as a soul and, you know, you being not the groomed ego, not the negative ego, not an ego that's out of balance, right? So as we reflect upon the Libra, the higher aspects that we can draw upon is the balance and harmony and justice aspects. We can evaluate in our lives where our relationship with others is causing us imbalance. All the things that Libra represents is something that we are going to be reflecting upon so that when we integrate into the Mars energy of Aries, which is what we're being called to integrate into, we have more of a sense of balance within ourselves. And that really comes with the reflections of those that are in our life. Um, and so a lot of people are going through turmoil in their relationships or breakups, or just the need to, you know, really ask yourself, are you able to stand up for yourself? Because that's what the Aries energy is all about. They both have something, you know, to teach each other, but Libra will encourage consideration of other feeling, uh, other people's feelings before you take action, where Aries will teach Libra not to be a doormat and overly prioritize others over self. So when we look at that on a larger picture level of what humanity is going through, people are going to have to determine within themselves, are you consenting because you're afraid of what other people think? Are you just a yes person to make other people happy? And when you are stepping into your sense of self, your, your ego identity and your willpower, are you moving forward in your truth or are you operating from that kind of imbalance? So the nodal shift and redefining self-worth on our own terms, redefining our self-esteem outside of anybody that represents an outer authority, whether it be our parent or whether it be society, is where we're also shifting the nature of our relationships so that we can determine whether or not they're really right for us. So more emphasis on self 
is what we're being called to uh, pay attention to. And then after you do that, because it's like the Ouroboros, the serpent biting his tail, we integrate the North node, go back into the South node, then the relationships that really aren't meant to be will naturally kind of fall away. That Uranus and Taurus, which is helping us to stand in our sovereignty and our truth and greater connection with our self-worth that we can really hold in conjunction with how that integrates into our sense of identity and that warrior spirit that's going to move forward. You know, the scales of balance are going to have to answer to that. So depending on where these things fall in your chart is going to determine how easy this is going to be. Um, so that's why I'm offering 15 minute calls after this so that you can just say, Hey, Laura, where's my North and South node? Where are the current transits impacting my chart? Because, you know, this is what we're up against. And This is uh, going to be a really potent time when the eclipses actually take place. The annual solar eclipse is October 14th, at two, uh, 2023. And this solar eclipse is in Libra. And the eclipse energies really impact us for many months. And then the partial lunar eclipse is going to be October 28th. This will be the last time that it impacts Taurus. And you can see in the charts here the new moon eclipse on October 14th, north node in Aries and the south node in Libra. And a lot of planets are going to be surrounding that Libra energy. And so this will probably be a really important time to reevaluate your relationship with others, partners, and just the way you answer to just people in your world. And this will impact people on uh every level and 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 the hope is is that people you know will notice what is out of balance and really start to pay attention to their physical health because the physical health is going to determine you know where there's unconscious blocks and where you're not maybe doing the clearing that is necessary pluto's going to be in retrograde until october and it's going to move back into aquarius in 2024 so you know this is all about resetting the energy of our lives so that we're not living something that contradicts what we want to just embody because of what we know right so north node aries is really about our ego identity and the eclipse time is going to be you know really powerful and then the full moon eclipse will be the moon in taurus north node will still be in aries but it's a chance to sort of revisit um, you know, what, what is preventing our ego identity from having the confidence to move forward? Where is our self-esteem being like triggered and, and, and not being courageous enough to, you know, move forward? Where are we still in sort of relationships where we're just not feeling a sense of balance? Where are we not doing the inner work? Where are we not integrating the polarity within ourselves to hold the higher octaves of Libra, which is all about justice, harmony, and balance. And the more we sit in these lower aspects, the easier it is for these dark forces to continue to um, find their way into our creative imagination, which is the Neptune energy. And uh, Saturn in Pisces is asking us to redefine our belief systems more in alignment with truth. And so healing from imbalance. I know for certain, I think all of you know that there's a deep place within us where we have always known who we truly are. And our inability to call it forward has created lists of conditions and diagnoses that the medical world kind of hands to us. And that seems to undermine who we are as a soul because it attempts to label us and like create, like, like it's a problem instead of us seeing that this is a part of the journey that we need to move through this, this adversity, this, this, this challenge, whether it manifests in the body as disease, 
whether it manifests as a, an event in our lives that feels like a tragedy, it's calling us to get more in touch with our soul um, so that we can really move forward. The part of us that is our truth can work against us if we don't honor ourselves. It can manifest as a feeling of isolation, feeling unseen and misunderstood. And um, it can also be a person who has the ability to see through things and feels crazy because there's no outer validation or support. And uh, I can't seem to move the box so I can read this, but it can manifest as repressed anger and resentment against all who have harmed us, causing us physical symptoms. It can cause rebellion or the pressure to prove oneself in the chosen field. It can bring about obsessive tendencies. It can create a deep desire to belong. And so one seeks a feeling of home and connection, but never feels at home within because the treasures are pushed away and seen as a problem. So we give our power away. This is very old paradigm stuff that we may relate to. The mix of all these things can cause depression, repressed anger, mood swings, and confusion. So waking up to us is not some new revelation. Many of us have known who we are all along. We've been very awake but and totally disorientated by this artificial world. But the challenge is in fully bringing one's true nature to the surface and not allowing oneself to buy into the projections that others may throw or feel insecure for not fitting in or like one is trapped and stuck here and not supposed to be here. So healing from imbalance goes across the board. Um, and again, when we go into these deep plunges into the dark night of the soul, we're not just releasing ourselves from any hooks or any attachments or any agreements. We're also rediscovering the parts of ourselves that we might not have brought into expression. And there, everything about these alignments right now is really helping us to do that. And I see more and more every day, just people just wanting to do what they know that they're called to do. Um, and, and so how can we feel that that's going to offer abundance when you feel like taking that step isn't something that's going to provide a paycheck? I mean, this transition is very much what this Pluto retrograde is all about. This is what we are in this like sort of self-evaluation and transition to begin to address. Do we want to stay put where we live? Do we want to move? Do we want to get out of a relationship? Do we want to change our job? You know, everything about our relationship to the system we've been answering to is, is coming down to what inner work we need to do to reconcile with the way we relate to authority in general, or the way we relate to the law of structure, the way we relate to where we take our gifts and abilities and, and, and what foundation are, or are, are we operating from? Is that something that we are hired to do from somebody else? Or is it something that we can begin to do on our own? Can we juggle both maybe for a little while? Sure. So anyway, many have allowed their own treasures and uniqueness to become a curse in a personal prison. And, um, it's 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 a lot because of the thousands of years of dark history of persecution and being silenced or having the things that you bring to the table um, just not be fully embraced. And when we unlock our own shell and barriers and resistances to stepping into our power and free that part of ourselves, you know, this really gives permission for everybody else to join in and say, wow, if you're doing it, I can do it. So instead of seeing what's wrong, we got to see what's right. You know, we have to free ourselves and embrace our divine gifts. Do it for you and not for anyone else. Do it regardless of who you might need to leave in your life. Do it because it's your truth. It's your power. It's your temple. It's your home. The symptoms just mean you're crying out for release and you don't want to judge it. You want to love it. Um, and a lot of people are feeling a lot in their bodies. And uh, so... I love this from uh, Lisa Renee, energeticsynthesis.com uh, and just how she really puts this. When incarnated into a physical human form, we evolve through the stages of the procession of equinoxes. This progression takes us through all the 12 layers of archetypal forces that hold instruction sets for the universal human body structure, as well as levels of DNA transmission. As the sun moves through each constellation, we receive frequency exchanges of intelligent instruction sets that are designed for the human body to evolve towards increasing DNA activation and spiritual ascension, which are alchemical forces being transmitted into the earth field. 
When astrological alignments occur through major conjunctions made between planetary and stellar bodies, forces of alchemy occur, which alter frequency current and manifest new creations that help to expand consciousness at planetary and personal levels. With the war over consciousness, humanity is undergoing psychological operations to prevent them from actually participating or being aware that these stellar forces are being transmitted to the earth for purposes of biospiritual evolution. So everything like the climate change, the transhumanism, the transgender, in a time where these greater planetary energies are assisting us in recognizing our deep relationship with Mother Earth and how the Earth responds to us and that this integration of polarity is helping us to get in touch with our masculine and feminine. You know, everything that is part of this indoctrination is just how it's all being weaponized, as we know. So hold on, let me just grab some water if you guys want to just have a quick break here. I'm just going to grab some water here. So if I'm not articulating myself as best as I can, it's just been nuts my end, just lots of like crazy energies. And that's why I really look forward to working like more one-on-one -on -one with people, because when it comes to initiations, we're all going through it in, in our own personal and unique ways. And uh, just being able to kind of look directly at what's going on with you, you know, is much more helpful because so much is coming up for people that they think they've or thought they already have cleared. And, and it's pretty wild because, um, you know, you could feel that you are awakened to something, but find that there's so much that's still inside of you that is just not quite there yet. And uh, there's no doubt. I mean, if, if you're a really sensitive person that everything that we're witnessing, I mean, it just feels like it's just gone, you know, way too far. And uh, it's really just difficult especially people with children i mean it's not easy to just pull your kids out and just be able to homeschool them and just get yourself off the grid but uh it's just the importance of coming together and staying united and just being a strong community is really just where it's at i just uh interviewed um some folks about all of this um and what they're doing you know to farmers and it's like we we really have to band together. And that's what I really feel like these nodal shifts is all about with this Aries energy. We're really being called to be the warrior, you know, stand in your truth, you know, look at where there's imbalance when you're reflecting on that Libra energy, you know, where, where do we need the courage to stand up for ourselves and begin to really, really speak out. Um, and, and it's not going to be the same for everybody as far as what they're willing to do, but you know, you can just really lead by example. And that's just really important because all these planetary alignments are connected to our physical body. And when we're not doing the inner work and we're not really clearing or purging and we get kind of stuck in it all. And, and, and it's a time to like really step into and integrate something. And we're not aware of that. And we're not really sure of what's going on you know, our physical body is going to start to send symptoms, right? Like, like, for example, if the North node is in Aries, and we're not doing that work to step into our sense of ego identity, that's based in our own truth, based in our connection with what our soul is telling us, what our intuition is telling us, we might notice that, you know, we have adrenal burnout, or we have headaches, or, you know, that could also mean that we're going through an upgrade. And like, things are kind of resetting themselves in the face of like a consciousness shift. But it's really important to understand how the signs and the planets impact our physical body so that when we do come across a physical symptom, we can begin to, um, you know, work with it and understand the storyline behind it, understand the energy behind it, understand a belief system or a trauma or some kind of agreement or some sort of something behind why this part of your body is being impacted. The sun now is in cancer, right? So there might be an exacerbation of people um, having physical symptoms surrounding this kind of energy. You know, if you look at the different organs connected to this and, and just kind of look at this chart, if you're having any physical symptoms, 
Um, yeah, this really helps. Gemini, shoulders, arms, hands, upper ribs, lungs, trachea, bronchi, capillaries, breath, oxygenation of blood, you know, our breath, our throat chakra, you know, porous, neck, throat, palate, larynx, tonsils, lower jaw, ears. I mean, Scorpio, right? Bladder, urethra, genitals, and Ephesus, Ephesus, the 13th sign, which is the great alchemist in the chart, which is now available to us. You know, are we having trouble with this activation of Kundalini? Are we having a difficult time integrating that energy to help us to purify the rest of all these signs? Because the ether energy is what purifies the inner elements. So Pluto retrograde will go direct in October back into Aquarius in 2024. During the bifurcation of time, our inner energetic integrity is being tested. This is the time to take stock, stock of how well we are coping with the madness of the earth as the collective mind of humanity travels the dark night of the soul. Um, and this is really what we've been dealing with on a collective level. And we all hold different parts of it when we navigate our own personal lives. And the more we step up to the plate and just go through this process, the more we impact the collective in a beautiful and profound way. Um, so bifurcation of time, Lisa Renee talks about this. Uh, this is from her website. So this unstable low frequency energy is where they wanna hold us with the divide and conquer, pitting us all against each other with all the different tactics that they use as we know. And so this is the big test. Are we going to allow that to get the best of us? Can we really, really hold love in the face of division, in the face of, you know, everything that is destabilizing people? And, you know, of course, the high frequency, which is the ascension energy, um, which is more stable, is, is love. And that's a high frequency. When we look at power versus force and the scale, uh, the Hawkins scale, and we see the different levels of energy connected to frequency. We know that the lower energies, you know, are very much in the fear, very much in the division, very much in just misplaced anger, very much in the contamination of the elemental energies and the shadow energies of these planetary alignments. That the psyops and the false flags and the mind control and the social engineering is wanting to hold us in, which really is what we would be enabling by letting our creative imagination and our creative energy and our thought forms um, in reaction to it, like hold us down. And so a lot of people are, are slipping into that. Um, and so most of us that are here listening that are holding this greater stability um, are, 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 for me, like I redundantly say, are like the 5D tower right now because we're the override frequency. We are the greater technology in maintaining this high frequency and finding stability and just maintaining a certain level of neutrality while just handling and dealing with whatever needs to be dumped, reevaluating relationships and reevaluating where you are in life and being willing to change and holding a greater trust in yourself and cosmic and natural law and what these initiations are really providing as discomforting as they can be, you know, that is the stable energy. It's moving us into the energies of courage, of love, of wisdom, of strength, you know? And so when we harness that Aries energy, which many already have in their own personal chart, in their own personal lives, but when we do it as a collective and we see more people willing to just take action um, and, and, and take action and stand up for yourself and where you're just still being a people pleaser and saying yes to this or that, or consenting to this or that, you know, you will recognize that your solar plexus, your ego identity is holding the stability of a greater integration of the polarity within you and the love that you need to hold in order to be that 5d tower where your words hold an energy that can um, offset the dark technology because anybody that's working in the low frequency energy, you know, wants to be in victim consciousness, wants to be very reactive, wants to be in battle mode, um, wants to choose sides, wants to be, I'm right, you're wrong, 
and that would be negative ego, right? So when we move into this Aries energy, we want that Aries energy to no longer be holding negative ego patterns or, or the lower octave energies of the Mars, which can be very uh, narcissistic, egocentric, very self-absorbed, right? So we want to reflect upon the Libra that wants balance and harmony and justice, and then stand strong in embodying that because we're here to integrate polarity. And every time the nodes show us South node, like it's been Scorpio, North node, Taurus, that's the integration of polarity. And so in our personal charts, the South node and North node are saying on a soul level, these are the polarities that your life purpose and your soul path wants you to integrate as a collective right now, we're integrating the polarity of Libra and Mars. Can we be in relationship with others and with life strong in who we are? Can we learn how to be respectful of others without giving our power away, without being a doormat, without being taken advantage of? Can we utilize the properties of both signs and bring them together in unification so that we're not too polarized on one side or the other. And that's why looking at a chart is so amazing because if the one part of the chart talks about soul purpose and it has to do with coming in with something to then step into the opposite to integrate, then we know obviously that this is what we're here to do on a soul level. And this is what we're here to do as a humanity in order to evolve. Because if we don't, and we're still in duality, we're in the low frequency instability. So the integration of polarity and what the nodes show us is where the greater work is. All the other planets are assisting this process, right? So as we emerge into this polarity integration of Libra, Aries, Saturn, and Pluto going into retrograde, what is it that we have to let go of in order to make this possible? And what what needs to die? What needs to be just release from our lives so that we're no longer hooked into something that is bringing us down into this instability, this low frequency. And I don't see it so much as a split. I see that the two timelines that are splitting do have a, still a connection, but, but the energetic cords are no longer there. There's no longer any more energy drainage. There's no longer you know, carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. There's no longer battling these outer forces or like feeling like you have to wake everybody up or just being in just all the information of what's coming from outside of you. You're more in the embodiment. You're more the living victory of what this greater work is just encouraging us to do because, you know, we got to just really take care of ourselves. It's, it's a lot to just um, shift the collective by um, being in battle with others. Obviously, um, it's the inspiration of li like living your life and leading by example, so that when people realize and hit that wall and realize, wow, this inverted system is taking me nowhere. When they finally wake up to it, they see that you know we're just holding the resource. We're living the embodied lifestyles that um, are are showing that you know if we can do it, so can they. And this is why we're going to come together more and more as a community to make sure that when we need that support, when we need to transition out of all of it, that we have people that we can count on to um, just be a source of strength and, and, and remembrance and, you know, all the options of people that are establishing me like communities and farms and living off the grid. And I mean, this is happening all over the world. And, and if we don't realize it's just right under our nose, we might not answer to it. And we might only notice the things that reinforce the anxiety or the survival energy or the discomfort of, you know, whatever it is we're letting go of. And again, um, I'm talking to all sorts of people here and so many that are well on their way and have been or were born that way. And some that might still feel that no matter how awake you are, you still got like one foot in the mud and you don't know where you're heading. Um, or what you're doing. But again, the synchronicities, the magic and the flow are in this high frequency. This is what the ascension energy is all about. We are living through a great transition and ascension process from a dark aeon to a new aeon. Many of the themes that were seeded by dark forces tens of thousands of years ago of human subjugation and enslavement are being reasserted in an attempt to maintain control. 
Yet most of humanity is unable to connect the dots or consciously participate in collapsing this timeline as we move towards a collective awakening. This is uh, from her recent newsletter, and it's all about the timeline wars, all about the Ascension timeline wars starting 26,000 years ago. So um, this is sort of the issue moving from one to the other. Pluto is the death of the old paradigm into the new. And this is a death process that's happening within ourselves of any attachment we have to that system. And it's about as daunting as a breakup is or, or, or feeling like you just have to leave home and be on your own for the first time for some people, for others that have seen through it all along. Um, like I said, it's, 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 it's maybe different, but it's it's no longer sustainable to stay in maybe some of the careers you're able to be in now that it's asking you to possibly present to our children an indoctrination program or present to a patient if you're in the medical industry um, something that doesn't offer them medical freedom. So so many people have walked away from it, and some are still working their way out of it, um, and some are very mourning the fact that so many people are stuck in it, but. Uh, we win the war on consciousness within. And as long as we claim that victory within the physical will begin to catch up and it's already encoded in us before we came in what the greater mission is. So a lot of life events are going to take place to help us shake loose of the things we might not feel we can easily shake loose from because these outer forces that are part of our higher mind and what comes from within and our intuition, you know, will kind of protect us in a sense, if we can't initiate a change, more than likely a crisis will happen to make that change for you um, so that you can get the heck out of what you need to get out of. So I'm going to bring in some things from the gospel of peace, the true teachings of the Essenes. And this might trigger some people who are holding on to a lot of kind of religious programming. But the reason I want to bring it up, and even if it's unconscious religious programming, anybody maybe who's here probably is not feeling that way. Um, you probably have an open mind to the kind of information I share. Uh, but the reason I'm sharing it is because Saturn is retrograde in Pisces. And, um, you know, it's really bringing us into like this revisiting our relationship with the Hierophant and devil archetype. So outer authority, false parent and partner, and how these astrological alignments are asking us to remove ourselves from their projected influence and redefine it within ourselves in accordance with cosmic and natural law is really what's, you know, kind of going on because there's definitely like a Saturn energy connected to the Hierophant and the devil archetype. And the Hierophant energy, particularly in the mother piece Tarot, um, is, is I, I really like the way that it's expressed because it is about, um, you know, patriarchy and, and because these kind of programs are something that we might adopt within ourselves. It's not so much about the outer world. It's about how much has it impacted us and infected us as far as, you know, playing by the rules or denying our greater intuition or greater acknowledgement of our inner divine feminine to come forward because, Dark technologies um, have played a huge part in this. And these archetypes, you know, are really holding this very strong. So, you know, the devil is really about denying spirit. And um, if we're subscribing in any way to some kind of dominant submission to, uh, mentality, and there's any kind of like issue of power, whether we're abusing power or exercising our will over others, or feeling that something is doing that to us, we're kind of facing that energy. And the Hierophant would be more about, you know, the rules, the more sort of punishing, you know, God. And so you don't even have to be religious. You could be like recovering from a religious family to just still be impacted by these kind of energies. And I love what Mother Peace says, the Hierophant is a bore. He's overbearing and pompous, feels superior to others and tries to keep a lid on what's happening. He's probably against dancing and singing and all these sorts of freedom of expression kind of things. Uh, certainly he would not be wanting you, used to, you to use tarot cards, um, which it might call a tool of the devil, right? So it's that kind of outer authority. And so that archetype, that's more the shadow part of it because it's very connected to Saturn and Jupiter and just like the law of structure. 
But if we can redefine it for ourselves and just look at like what's holding us back, what has been repressing us, even if we're not engaging in these sort of agreements anymore, you know, where is that ancestral pattern or where is that belief still holding you hostage is the question because the dark Saturn and what we're seeing in society and what we're seeing in people is bringing up a lot of these shadow elements that even if they don't even look like they're because their expression isn't really holding it, you can sort of see that they're answering to it in a different form. That's kind of disguising itself in some of these, you know, so-called progressive movements, if you know what I mean. So it's very, very tricky in how it disguises itself. Anything that's outer authority in general that is telling us what to do and how to think is a form of that control energy. It doesn't really matter what it comes from. So just to really like look at the deeper history, the cosmic Christos dragon teachings and all that was connected to the mother of dragon knowledge that was exemplified by Mary Magdalene Sophia's legacy was gradually desecrated, destroyed or converted into the Vatican approved narratives. The draconian invasion into Rome from 2000 years ago gradually infiltrated the Greek knowledge and sacred texts in order to build the church of Rome, which was used to hide and subvert the original Essene Christo Sophia dragon teachings and spread religious mind control and spiteful misogyny in its place. This began the negative alien agenda installation of organized religions slanted in patriarchal domination that were used to distort the knowledge and remove the awareness of the existence of the inner Christ. And so very much the 12 houses and 12 signs of the Zodiac with the 13th sign and what we move through in every calendar year, not the Gregorian calendar, but just the cycles of nature more connected to just how we feel into these cycles and these planetary alignments and what it like moves us through just through moving through all the zodiac energies even if it is connected to um the calendar system and how we answer to our schedules and this and that because we do answer to the seven days a week in the um gregorian calendar to a certain degree but where is this taking us sort of beyond it? Where is our acknowledgement of these greater initiations taking us sort of beyond it so that um, we're not in this sort of overlay? So all the energies that we're moving through is developing us every year to awaken that divine blueprint. And it's all designed to switch that on. Okay, so just to go back into just the manipulation of these kind of texts, the distorted mess of what has become the Bible for what was once a decent book that attempted to translate part of the legitimate knowledge of the cloister door Torah text before the Anunnaki Palladian Nibirians gutted the real documents that were once a unified Bible, Torah, Kabbalah, sutra translation of the original Atlantean Emerald Tablets before Thoth edited them for his own agendas. All of these teachings came out of the cloister Dora Torah, and all of them were then distorted to the point of non-recognition from what they had once represented. So this isn't like to blast anybody that follows the Bible or who's Christian at all. It's just to see though that if we don't remember that we are here to become Christed individuals, then some of that distortion, you know, can get the best of us. Even if you've completely negated all religion in your life you know so if you look at the Essene gospel of peace this is so interesting you know just to hear this they sent out healers and one of them was Jesus the Essene he walked among the sick and the troubled he he brought them the knowledge they needed to cure themselves some who followed him wrote down what passed between him and those who suffered and were heavy laden the elders of the brotherhood made poetry of the words and made unforgettable the story of the healer of men, the good shepherd. And when the time came at last for the brothers to leave the desert and go to another place, the scrolls stayed behind as buried sentinels, as forgotten guardians of eternal and living truth. A dark age began, a time of savagery, of barbarism, of book burning, of superstition and worship of empty idols. The gentle Jesus was lost forever in the image of a crucified God. The Essene brothers hid their teachings in the minds of a few who could preserve them for the descendants, for their descendants. And the scrolls of healing lay neglected beneath the shifting shadows of the desert. So the discovery of the Essene gospel of peace really just talks about all the elementals and talks about the mother. 
And, and so, so, so there's questions and answers in this book. We all do the laws of Moses, our lawgiver, even as they're written in the Holy Scriptures. And Jesus answers, seek not the law in your scriptures, for the law is life, whereas the scripture is dead. I tell you truly, Moses received not his laws from God in writing, but through the living word. The law is living word of uh, living God to living prophets for uh, living men. And everything that is life is the law written. You find it in the grass, in the tree, in the river, in the mountain, in the birds of heaven, in the fishes of the sea. But seek it chiefly in yourselves. For I tell you truly, all th living things are nearer to God than the scripture, which is without life. So the reason I'm sharing this is because of the importance of this inner work and the let, letting go of, you know, anything that is written that has become a teaching and not to let it go, like throw the baby out with the bathwater, completely negated. I'm not saying I'm talking to a bunch of people that are like saying, you know, why is she talking about this? We're not like necessarily religious, but I mean, you know, we know the importance of a lot of what was passed down. And a lot of people do refer to the Bible and it's not saying that, you know, not to, but look at this source of information that um, recognizes how much this information has been um, distorted because there are deep, deep inner programmings that are still connected to your family members or past lives that um, kind of hold on to all this. And so Saturn and Pisces and Pluto retrograde is really bringing it all to the surface and and just the call to return to the mother is so strong and being able to really feel into the cosmic natural law and your ability to really, really, you know, heal through your connection with nature as an elemental being that holds earth, air, fire, water, ether within yourself. And so that the real law is written in the trees, in the water, in the mountains, in the birds, and 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 uh kind of hope you get where I'm going with all this. So Wherefore do you not listen to the words of God, which are written in his works? And wherefore do you study the dead scriptures, which are the works of the hands of men? How may we read the laws of God elsewhere than in the scriptures? Where are they written? And it's in the elements around us is what the book says. So the rings of Saturn and according to David Icke, our massive broadcast system broadcasting a fake reality. DNA holds all the information we'll ever need to build and maintain the human body. Research at Boston uh, University and Harvard Medical School, uh, School studied the 98% of our DNA that remains unable to be decoded is called trash DNA. So again, you know, any kind of relationship without our authority, whether it be unconscious religious programmings, whether it be an outer authority that you were raised with, whether it be something that got passed down to your mothers, we're all born to clear this from our system and from our unconscious as much as we might think we're awake so much might be coming to the surface for people that's manifesting in your body as physical symptoms that you might not recognize is stemming from this because this is thousands and thousands of years of this being passed down and it's part of the manipulation of the planetary grid network it's part of the infiltration of all the power structures of any sort of outer authority that holds this imbalance because if we look at it the imposter energy behind it is very satanic and the satanic energy is connected to dark mother reversals so in healing all of this is reconnecting to nature and reconnecting to the laws of creation and of this earth that exists within us to begin to switch on the dormant strands of our dna to move beyond the artificial components of the moon and the rings of saturn and this saturn moon matrix and it's all about intention and the power of our words. And um, I'm not going to just read through this, but um, I'll just read the last line. This is how the negative alien agenda control humanity by manipulation of consent in the mind, by removing intention of thoughts and making them automatic reactions in the unconscious mind. Further, that manipulates the soul. This makes the negative alien agenda false gods and intermediary source field and posture spirits for many unsuspecting humans who cannot discern the difference between lies and deceptions and the truth. This comes through everything, false narratives connected to disclosure, new age deceptions. I mean, it's coming at us from all angles and basically, you know, 
the devil archetype would be the misuse of that power and represented itself in the form of deception or a false authority that is in that archetype hierophant, which does way better when you do a reading and it's upside down. It means that um, you are moving to the higher octaves of Saturn, which is more about self-mastery and becoming a teacher because you're able to overcome the limitations and obstacles and energy blockages that come from anything outside of you telling you how to do things against your own intuition and common sense or inner knowing. And this is why I bring it up and because any level of consent to it on any level, uh, our bodies are going to retaliate in these times and, and feel its grip. And this is the last ditch effort of these dark entities and this dark agenda to prey upon where this might still be holding you down. And, you know, the only reason I brought up just some quotes from that book is because we, we, we need to understand that this is an ascension planet and that what we hold in connection with this is what is going to move us through this great purification and time of awakening more than anything else. Mm -hmm.